any who would any who would prefer not to have your picture be shown, uh, then please uh, turn your camera off. And if there are any of you who would prefer that your name not be shown, then just go in and rename yourself. There'd be no problem with that. So that being said, uh, let's get on with it. I'm super excited to be here. Um, I feel I feel to a certain degree um, like I've been walking through slowly drying concrete for the last several months. Um, I have been and I have been um, in an environment that is totally unnatural for me. Um, playing defense is not natural for me. Playing offense is what is natural for me. And uh, so to uh, in, a, in a very, very big respect um, for me, this is a, a thank God moment. In yesterday's session, I started out with the idea that, at least in my case, my mind is basically sitting vacant, waiting for me to tell it where to go. Um, if I don't tell it in advance where to go, then there is some likelihood or certainly risk at least that it will go where the current... Um, cultural environment would take it. Um, our cultural environment right now is not altogether positive. There are a lot more negative things that people are seeing and thinking and talking about. And so I discovered a long time ago that if I want to be happy and if I want to think constructive thoughts and if I want my attitude to be positive, then I need to get in front of what my brain is thinking. And so I play, I don't even call it a trick. My mind just knows that in the morning I get up and the first thing I do is I uh, I see or hear or experience something that has the capacity to do what I described yesterday as dilating my soul so that it can let in more light. It only takes a couple of minutes to do it. And because I want each of you, every one of you, I want you to be able to get everything that is possible from this session. And so I'm going to invest just about three minutes doing something for each of us that uh, over the years has dilated my soul. And so what we'll do, I'm going to share my screen. And many of you have probably seen this, many have not. Um, yesterday, we watched Secretariat. Uh, for me, it's a simple thing. Whenever I see someone or something do something that is indescribably good, something that defies human nature, then that would imply that there must be some connection to the divine. Um, and whenever I get myself connected to the divine, whenever you get connected to the divine, however you perceive that, then in St. Teresa of Avila's verbiage, what it does is it dilates our soul so that it can let in more light. Whenever I see some person or some group of people do something that is better than you could expect, then that gives me renewed hope and confidence and faith in, uh, in my counterparts who are wandering through this earthly experience. Um, this is a group called Calabro. Um, they won the Britain got, Britain's Got Talent contest a couple of years ago. It says on the video, it's six minutes and 39 seconds. We won't watch all that. We'll watch about three and a half. But what happens every time I do something like what we'll now do together, it makes me encouraged. John C. Maxwell said years ago that, uh, that encouragement is oxygen for the soul. Um, I would like my soul to be fully oxygenated. I would like my soul to be fully dilated such that it lets in a more light. And I would like yours to be likewise as we begin this session. So join me in enjoying Calabro, and then we'll get on with it. Hi there, we are Calabro. Do you have day jobs? I'm a laborer. I'm a sales assistant on a petrol garage. I'm a kitchen salesman. I work in a Japanese restaurant. I work in a hospital. Okay, lovely. How long have you guys been a group? We've been together for about a month now. A month? Oh, not long. What makes you think after a month that you're good enough to win Britain's Got Talent? Natural chemistry, I think. Okay, lovely. Well, whenever you're ready. There, out in the darkness, a fugitive one fallen from God. Didn't expect me. Fallen from grace. God be my witness. I never shall yield till we come face to face. Till we come face to face. He knows his way in the dark. Mine is the way of the Lord. Those who follow the path of the righteous shall have their reward. And, and if they fall as Lucifer fell, the flame will soar. in your multitude. Scarce to be counted, 
filling the darkness with order and light. You are the sentinels, silent and sure, keeping watch in the night, keeping watch in the night. You know your place in the sky. You hold your course and your reign. And each of your seasons returns and returns. And it's always the same. And if you fall at Lucifer's bed, you fall in love. And so we ask you, so it on the dark. Don't some water and love to love must bear the love. Are the audience like it? Lord, let me find him, that I may see him. Safe behind bars. <laughs> What? <laughs> Okay, now folks, uh, let me ask you all a simple question. Do you or do you not feel different now than you felt three and a half minutes ago? I do. I felt great three and a half minutes ago. I feel better now than I felt three and a half minutes ago. And not, you're my project. My project is to get and not back her bubbles. And so until such time as and has got her bubbles back, you guys are all going to get subjected to some kind of soul dilating procedure in the beginning of every single Zoom. And so what I have found is that literally and truly, and no kidding, my mind is waiting in neutral for me to tell it whether to be happy or unhappy, whether to be constructive or discouraged, whether to have bubbles or not. I think it's a choice. And so I make a choice every day to do that, which is required to feel as good as I can possibly feel, irrespective of, the, of what the external influences are. Now today, uh, we have a very, very special session. Today, um, my friend and counterpart, Jim Moyles, Jim and I have been friends and business partners for many, many years. He's one of the most successful people that I know in life um, and in business, and one of the most gifted network marketing leaders that I know. Um, takes a very, very different approach than many. There are many people who almost demand the spotlight. They demand the stage. They demand the attention. Uh, Jim is the opposite. Jim is the uh, Jim is the godfather who's standing behind the screen. Uh, and when I say the puppeteer, I don't mean in a negative way because that can be viewed negatively. But now he is the person who is charting the course, guiding the boat, and very, very uh, freely and, and without any thought or hesitation or pause, transferring the spotlight to somebody else. A uh, remarkable guy. Jim's going to share some time with us, and um, I'm also thrilled to note that tonight, Eric Allen, who is the chairman of the company, one of the co-founders, is going to be with us. I described the fact that on this session, what I wanted to talk about is strategically what can and should we be doing right now in advance of opening. Now, there's this enormous pent-up demand. There's this shocking amount of enthusiasm. What exactly should we be doing right now? And yet, we don't have registration links. Um, and so the question is, what can and should we do? Um, let me reflect upon this simple thought. The business that I am in is in the business of growing people. And so is there anything about the current environment, given that we can't enroll the second, does that really change my basic business? No, my basic business is in realizing that I want to identify, I want to find people of goodwill and intent who want more and who are willing to do more. Now, many of you on this session, I know there are some I don't know. But I know that many of you are, in fact, people of goodwill and intent who want more and who are willing to do more. I thought the first thing that would be constructive would be to fill in some blanks. I've had more than a few conversations over the last couple of days with people saying, but Randy, and by the way, the whole, for me at least, the whole conversation of what was, it will fade into the background very, very quickly. 
I'm now responding to questions. Sometime over the course of the next week or 10 days, you will find that Finmore, uh, Transact Card, those fade into the recesses of my memory. And if I reference them, I'll be referencing them in the same light that I reference New Skin, the place where I spent some time in my career 30 years ago. Now, the same place where I reference Rexel Showcase International. So I am about halfway over the bridge where those uh, that commentary no longer will even become a part of the discussion. But for right now, uh, there, re there remains a need to cross a few bridges. And so I've had people query me and say, well, Randy, um, you got involved in Transact Card. I listened to your messages and you told me that the reason you got involved was because you had a, a care and a compassion and a desire to help those who are laboring under financial pressure. And so you were going to provide a mechanism that could help them cause their money to go further um, and that you could get that you yourself could profit as a result of helping other people experience life with less financial abundance. And the question was raised, so how exactly does a curated premium travel experience fit into that? I mean, one, so a, a week ago, I'm talking with people about how I can save them money and help them have a little less financial pressure. And now a week later, I'm talking about the curated premium travel service. Well, how do those two line up? Remember that my idea in the beginning and all of our ideas were that we could get paid not because we caused someone else to spend or to buy, but we could get paid because we helped someone else do what they wanted to do and do it with a little less money. That was the whole bargain. That was the thing we planned for. And so let me ask you all a question. Is there really a conflict or is there not? Um, are people going to travel today? Are people going to travel today? Uh, drive up and down the highway and tell me if there are hotels out there. Are those hotels being booked every day? And are they being booked right now because you're asking people to go book a hotel? Or are they being booked because people either need or want to travel? So you see, I see this as being far more similar than it is dissimilar. People on a daily basis, the day after tomorrow, I'll board an airplane and I will fly to Europe. Um, this company didn't ask me to do that. I'm not doing it for the company. I'm doing it for my own business purposes. And so is it or is it not the exact truth that by me being involved in this company, as soon as that premium travel site is turned on, then does it not meet the exact need that I had 10 days ago? That need being to help people do something that they want to do, not that I'm asking them to do, or that they need to do, and being able to do it for a little less money. The answer is yes, this fits that mold absolutely exactly. And by the way, today, Eric gave me um, the keys to the kingdom. I was able to get into the travel site today. I wish that I could send the link and the password to you all. Um, one of my friends, Jim Wells, who's going to talk with us later on, asked me a question earlier that provoked the interaction. He said, so Randy, um, I, I think it's really cool that we can have a travel site that lets people book a Holiday Inn Express or a, uh, um, a Best Western and, and save a little bit of money because there are so many people who are struggling and strapped financially right now. But he said, you know, that's not really my world. and It's not really the world of most of my counterparts. And he said, what do you think? You suppose we could get a deal on a Ritz-Carlton? And so I took a quick look and what I do, I did a search over at uh, Hong Kong and I know the Ritz-Carlton in Hong Kong. I've stayed there. It's one of the finest hotels in the world. What did I find out? You can book the Ritz-Carlton Hong Kong on our travel engine. You can book it for about $85 a night less than you can on Orbitz, Expedia or Travelocity. That's the God's honest truth. And that's something that I discovered just about an hour and a half ago when for the first time, Eric gave me the keys to the kingdom and let me look around a little bit. Very shortly, you will all be given the same keys to that kingdom. And you will find that there is value to be had, whether a person is trying to book the least expensive discount hotel chain, whether they're trying to book the most uh, extraordinary four seasons in the world or the Shangri-La or the, um, the plaza in New York you will find that there is value here, real value. And once again, are you asking people to buy something? No. Are you asking them to spend money? No. You're providing a mechanism where they can do what they decided they wanted to do for their own reasons and purposes, separate and distinct from whatever your goals are. And you are simply providing them a mechanism to do it for less money. I view that as being completely consistent with the messaging that I've been involved with for the last year. The second thing that we did was what? We had the idea that we could help people save money by introducing a an online shopping experience. And uh, I will let Eric, in fact, I don't know if Eric will talk to that today or not, but I can tell you that if not immediately with the introduction of the travel site, there will also be an e-commerce site that already has value, that already has value literally right now. And so while some people have questioned me about whether or not this is a dramatic shift of gears, this for me is not a dramatic shift of gears. This is a more subtle shift of gears in terms of the product offering and in terms of what is our overall message. 
helping people do what they want to do because they want to do it, not because we encourage them to, helping them do it with a little less financial outlay and getting paid as a result of it. That is an entirely consistent message. That is not an inconsistent message. Then the idea of being able to provide people the opportunity to buy consumer goods at discounted prices. That opportunity um, will exist here perhaps sooner than it would have existed if you just stayed you know, where you were a week ago. Uh, that's coming like really, really soon, the same time the company opens. Will it be a huge consuming experience at the outset? No, it'll be a relatively small consuming experience. Will it be enough to cause a person to say, my gosh, if I'm not traveling, is there still something here for me? Yes, the e-commerce site will be enough to cause them to say that's there. And for those who are not traveling right now, that doesn't change the fact that you live in a world full of people who travel. If you're not planning on buying any airplane tickets right now, no problem. There are other people in your world that are going to buy airplane tickets right now. The answer is yes. And then there are other things that I know that are coming down the road. I think that our most recent experience of talking so frequently about things that are not available, that has proven to be a net lose and a source of incredible frustration. And so I will school myself and I will have discipline to only talk about things that are currently available or that are imminently available. And so those things that are imminently available are a premium curated, a curated premium travel experience. What else is available? And that's what, that's the group travel. Um, what else is available? A Just a standard online booking engine, similar to Travelocity or Orbitz, but better value. You are going to see better value. Now, am I telling you that you're going to go and buy a, a, a Holiday Inn Express and save a lot of money on that? No, that defies logic, doesn't it? If you're working in deep discounts, then what you're going to get is a small dip discount on our site off of that deep discount. If you're working more premium travel experiences, then you're going to see great big savings. Okay. Next thing that will happen is the e-commerce site. Those things totally consistent for me. The question that, that or the uh, issue that I wanted to cover tonight is what exactly is appropriate today, given that the company is not yet open? Well, there were um, questions that I had a couple of days ago. I asked people to sign NDAs before being on a Zoom. I did that for two reasons. The first reason that I did it is because that, for me, made it feel more special. If I'm saying, Jason, I'm going to deliver information to you that you have a right to have, that other people have not earned that right to have. Um, having people sign an NDA was one of the ways of expressing my own gratitude, trust, and respect for those people I sent it to. The second thing was I, am, um, I don't have anything bad to say about any other person or company. I did state on that last message that, and I've also, I want to address it one more time. I've had um, a lot of people say, Randy, among all of the visible noted leaders in the company, you are the one who continued to be flying the flag, holding the standard, saying this is going to be fine. That's what you're telling me one day. And the next day you said something different. What's up? Okay, you have the right to know what's up. The reason that I no longer am able to encourage and support people to stay where I was is because I discovered that they are have changed or, or are not honoring um, pledges to make refunds. And the fact is that for me crossed a red line. Anybody who wants a refund, if what they bargained for was not provided, they weren't provided a card, they weren't provided a shopping experience. I believe 100% of people should be given a refund. I think they should get it right now. I don't think there should be any questions about it. Uh, it was when I found out the company was not doing that, that crossed a red line for me that I'm not willing to be a part of. Um, and so um, that was it. Why was one day I willing to continue to support an idea and the next day I was not willing to support the idea because that crossed a red line for me. Now, I just said that in open space. And so I'm pretty sure since I didn't ask you all to sign an NDA that I'm going to get some grief from that for somebody. But it doesn't change. The truth is the truth. That's not disparagement. That is a simple truth. That for me crossed a red line. And so that door closed and a new door needed to open. As you all know, at that point in time, I was contemplating starting my own company. I decided it made more sense to, um, to in engage in something that I believe has the meat on the bones to make possible a different kind of success. And it made it far more, it made it far more, I believed a much more, much better idea to have a consistent message with others who had been part of the leadership group as opposed to a conflicting message. So here we are. Now, the question is, what exactly would be appropriate right now? I'm going to share with you guys some, some truth that is not frequently shared in network marketing. First thing I do is find me a whiteboard. This is a bit of truth. Not everybody likes this truth, by the way. And I shouldn't even say a bit of truth as it relates to network marketing. This is just a bit of truth, period, that re as it relates to business. So give me my whiteboard open, open up here. 
Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, take this one second to get loaded up. Okay. So for the last um, long time, there has been a lot of commentary about network marketing. And a lot of that commentary has not been all kind of constructive commentary. Uh, there has been a lot of um, criticism over the shape of the business. Oh my gosh, this thing's not letting me get a pen. I'm sorry. Okay, there we go. There I got my pen. Okay, and so there's been a lot of criticism about the actual shape of the business model. Criticism that this, um, oh my gosh, I may not be able to use my whiteboard, folks. I'm sorry, it's not working. Okay, we're going to kill the whiteboard. Sorry about that. Let's close whiteboard. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just do it verbally instead. A lot of criticism about this shape, this pyramid shape. A lot of questions and criticism for lots of people for a long time. Um, it's a beautiful shape, and it's a near-perfect shape. If you construct a structure in that shape, you literally can't knock it down. They've been standing in Egypt for the last 7,000 years. Uh, the exact reality is that most people in network marketing and most people in the company where we have been for the last period of time have not been building this shape. Most have been turning that upside down, building a V shape. How could that be? How would you build a V shape? Well, the pyramid shape is constructed when one builds a leadership hierarchy. That's what happens when one builds a leadership hierarchy. Um, Many years ago, Cicero said that the skill to do comes from the doing. And so now I'm looking at Tony Bloom. That happens to be the face that's next to mine on the screen. And so, Tony, let me ask you this question. What skill are you developing at this moment as you listen to me talk? Huh. You don't develop skill by listening to somebody else, do you? You can gather knowledge by listening to somebody else, but you cannot create skill. The skill to do comes from the doing. And so when we have been, and, and, and again, please, 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 uh, I would be so disappointed if anybody said I'm critical of anything, of anyone. I'm not. I'm illustrating points that I think are important. Um, when the vast majority of you have been, as your primary business building process, inviting people to go to a Zoom, maybe five or six Zooms in a day, now your, your entire membership is inviting people to go and listen to who? To the same people over and over and over again, bringing more and more and more people to hear a similar, a, the same very, very small group of people present the business over and over and over. So Tony, if you have a thousand people go to a Zoom and listen to me present the business, at what point will those thousand people become skilled in presenting the business? Never. But what if instead of simply inviting them to listen to a leader talk, what if we engage them in a process where they are taking ownership in the business, where they are presenting the business? I mean, Tony, if I'm helping you present the business, now you are developing a skill. And if you develop a skill that becomes well-developed and founded, then someday, one day, you can do it on your own and not need to rely upon me. You see, if I'm teaching you to do what I do, then I'm building this. If I'm simply inviting you to benefit from my knowledge and skill, then I'm building this. And folks, know and understand this. Whenever you build a V-shaped structure, it will fall over. It absolutely is going to fall over. There is no V-shaped structure that will stay in place. This structure will stand the test of time. It'll stand forever. This structure will not stand very long at all. And so now the question that I post to every one of you, and I really want my whiteboard to work. This is living proof that not everything that I want happens. I really want my whiteboard to work. Let's see if it will. I'll try one more time with my whiteboard. It may be that if I go to a different room where I've got better internet, it'll work. Come on, come on. You're being very patient with me. So I, you know, I'm not going to go to the other room where I've got better internet, just in case it makes my whiteboard work. Be patient with me. I apologize for this. <laughs> internet doesn't work. I just got to come in here. I'm going to use my whiteboard. <laughs> Okay, now I'm in a different room, which may or may not have better internet. We'll see. I think it does. Okay, and so as I've been describing, if we are building this shape, this is in fact what we are doing when we are inviting people to come and hear a leadership group present the business over and over and over. That's what is happening. 
And somebody says, Marie says, I thought they were doing it for us. Um, Maria, the simple reality is that they are doing it for you. That is true. But they are doing it for you um, with good intentions, but poor outcome. If instead I help you present the business yourself, then the day comes when you no longer need me to help you present it. If I'm presenting it for you, then the day never comes when you can successfully present it. That is the truth. And so my objective is to make it such that a leadership structure is being developed where everybody learns how to present the business. That is why I have taught for a long time the ladder of escalation. This will be information that most of you are not familiar with. There is a pattern of activities that I've lived with for the last now 30 years. The pattern of activities is what? The first rung on the ladder of escalation is when I utilize a properly constructed script to let a tool talk. And so uh, I, don't, I don't know Tony, but imagine that I did know Tony, then I would have a properly constructed script saying something like this. Um, the way that I work is at step number six, I create relationships. I create relationships primarily by listening. And so if I'm listening to Tony over a period of time, then I learn what's important in Tony's life. When I learn what's important in Tony's life, that gives me the opportunity to use a properly constructed script. I then contact Tony and I say, Tony, remember I saw you at the beach three weeks ago and I remember what you told me about the birth of your new grandchild. By the way, that's not Tony's experience. I'm making this up. Told me about the birth of your new grandchild. And Tony, I remember the desire that I had to fund my grandchildren's education. Um, I remember the look in your eye. I remember how important it was to you. If you'd like, Tony, I can send you a four minute video link that will illustrate to you the way that I've been able to fund my children and grandchildren's education. Would you like to receive the link? Now that is a properly constructed script. It was answering a, it was responding to an issue that Tony raised. It wasn't me rushing to Tony and saying, Tony, do this. No, Tony, you said, and I've not been able to get you off my mind. I remember the look in your eye, that was important. I may have a mechanism to help you accomplish that. If you'd like, I can provide you the four minute video link. After you watch it, please let me know if you want to talk further. Now that is what I do. That's what I do. That's this first rung on the ladder of escalation. Now, those of you who have listened to me speak or teach for a period of time, you know this, you know that there are four skills and there are four revenue producing activities. The first skill is the one that is consistent with step number six. That is to learn to live our life in such a way that our candidate list is continually always growing in front of us. I was taught many years ago something that I now believe was in error. I was taught years ago the most important thing I could learn how to do was learning how to invite. Learning how to invite simply means that I know what to say and know what not to say so that my candidate opens their eyes, their ears, and their hearts to the possibility. <laughs> If one knows how to invite, then the pressure, excuse me, if one has properly prepared a candidate, if I listened to what Tony said and I then responded to his need, I'm helping him do something that he wants, that then takes all of the pressure off of the invitation. It also takes the pressure off of the presentation. So the first skill and the first thing that I would have people learning how to do is learning today how to conduct ourselves on a daily basis such that people we have not met yet yeah, not even yet met today, become a logical candidate for us at some time in the near future. Okay, now I'm not going to go into how that happens right now. I'm simply describing to you the things that need to happen. Um, the second rung on this ladder of escalation, I send that video to Tony and I say, Tony, upon review of the video, please let me know if you want to know more. I'm telling you in advance, I'm not calling you back. You say, wait a minute, Randy, we have to follow up. Well, Tony, here's the way it really works. If I call you back the next day, Tony, what'd you like about that link? Wasn't that fantastic? At that second, it feels to you like I'm chasing you. And at that second, it feels to me like I'm chasing you. Remember that every single thing that we do is teaching somebody else what they must do. If I chase you, I'm teaching you, you've got to chase others. And I don't know, Tony, but I'm willing to bet you don't want to. Isn't that about right? And so if instead of that, I say, Tony, upon review of this video, if you want to know more, you let me know. Changes the dynamic, everything changes. Now I'm teaching Tony, I'm not gonna chase him and I'm teaching Tony, he's not gonna chase others. Now, what do I do? Now I send the second video clip. Remember, on this ladder of escalation, every subsequent look must be superior to the prior look. And so the second rung on the ladder of escalation is what? Tony responds, that's kind of interesting, Randy, I'd like to know more. Now I send him a second video exposure. It's also only four or five minutes long. Now I become totally assumptive. 
if you learn how to invite, then the vast majority of people will not just review the first link, but they'll review the first link with eager anticipation of what's in it for him or her. They won't review it in a grudging way. They won't review it so they can get you off their back. They will view it to find out what's in it for him or her. And if a person looks at our message with eager anticipation of what's in it for him or her, they will find. That's the truth. If we try to convince them because of our own initiative, they will not. If we're helping them do what they want, then they will. Now, if a person asks for the second link, in my case, because I've gone a long ways down the road towards learning how to properly prepare a candidate, because I've struggled, I've tried for 30 years to master the art of the invitation, the vast majority of people that I send the second link to, I'm talking about more than 90%, they ask for the second link, they're going to join me. Will it be this week or this month? Will it be next week or next month? I don't know, but they're going to join me. The next rung on the ladder of escalation is the basic leadership development platform. And by the way, not everybody likes my message. Everybody likes my results. A lot of people don't like my message. Uh, the, next re the next activity is to do what? I watched the first link. It made sense. I want to know more. I watched the second link. It made sense. I want to know more. Now I invite you to a home business review. And when I invite you to a home business review, that is when this begins to occur. Because now, instead of your candidate hearing this same leadership group present the business, now your candidate's hearing you present the business. Uh, Tom, Tony, again, I'm picking on you because I'm looking at your face. Um, true or not true, I don't know what your background is in the industry, but what do you think? If I simply invite you to be on a Zoom, then if you come by yourself, that's A-OK, -okay, isn't it? No problem. And if you don't show up, who will even notice? What if instead of that, I do a property member orientation and I say, Tony, I'm going to be in your house sometime in the next two weeks. And again, two weeks after that, we're going to launch your business together. And uh, the first presentation I'm going to do on your behalf, and I'm going to help you cross the bridge and get comfortable. The second presentation we'll share. The third will be mostly you and a little bit of me. The fourth one, I'll be there just to uh, be as a fail safe in case you need help. You see, Tony, four weeks into it, you can be presenting the business yourself. Now, isn't that different than in four weeks if you're simply sending your guests to listen to another Zoom? And so please don't misunderstand. Now there will be those who say, wait a minute, Randy's criticizing the entire process. No, I'm not. What I'm doing is illustrating the way that I use the process. The next rung on the ladder of escalation is what? This is the belief building. The person watches the video one. Yep, makes sense. They watch video two. Sure, I want to know more. They come to a home business review. Who did they meet? They met Tony. Tony was brand new. Tony was making more money, making no money, just barely getting started. He might have said, reading a paper, hey, I'm glad you're here. I've never talked to a group before. This is kind of scary to me. I'm not making any money yet. Thanks for being here, encouraging me and supporting me. Now those people, they know they need to see a bigger picture. And so now the next thing I do is I invite them to that Zoom on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or the eight or 10 of them that are going on that given day. Now you see this Zoom is a concluding feature instead of a beginning feature. Just ask yourself a question. If I take a ladder and lean it against a wall and I try to put my foot on the fifth rung first, do you suppose that if I put my foot on the fifth rung first, there's a greater likelihood that I fall down than there would be if I put my foot on the first rung first? The answer is clearly, obviously, and absolutely yes. And so what I believe in all of you is a proven, predictable pattern of activities. What comes behind that, what becomes behind that next is the regional event. And what comes behind that, excuse me, the open business presentation in a hotel. And what becomes behind that is the national event or the regional event. And so you see, there is a process. Enrolling a new person who becomes a leader in our business is not an event. It is a process. Now, we find ourselves at this remarkable point in time where because the dynamics of a brand new business and because the dynamics of the compensation plan of this brand new business, speed is of ultimate importance, absolute ultimate importance. And so the common critique of my process is, well, Randy, this process slows me down. The truth is this process does slow you down for the first six or eight weeks. For the next 50 years, it speeds you up. Because instead of having a whole bunch of people who are dependent upon you, you have a whole bunch of people who are becoming self-dependent. Remember, every single thing we do will do one of two things. It will either create an attitude of independence and a reality of independence, or it will create an attitude and reality of dependence. If you build a web of people who are dependent upon you, I promise you, you'll never make the amount of money you're dreaming of. And if you do, the amount of money won't be worth it because you won't have a life. The single greatest measure of success in our business is if when you're not doing it, nobody even knows. 
How will that happen? That will only happen if instead of you doing it for other people, you engage people in a process which results in them having the knowledge, the skill, and the character attributes required to get the key in the lock. So specifically and exactly, what do I think is appropriate to be doing right now? It is to dive into as deeply as you can. Step number six, what is step six? It is learning how to live our lives in such a way that our candidate list is growing in front of us. Every one of us, if you, if I could snap my fingers and cause you to know and understand what I know and understand right now, you would say, I must have no fewer than 100 valid candidates on my candidate list by the time they turn these enrollment links on. You don't have 100 people on your candidate list between now and then, that was a fail. I'm telling you, every once in a while, there's a chance to do six years worth of work in six weeks. It doesn't happen often. When it comes, you need to act upon it. You need to act upon it with aggression. Every single person should have no fewer than 100 people on your candidate list before the registration links go live. Second, the idea of knowing how to grow a candidate list. Um, I apologize that I don't have video resources available for you right now. Uh, they were all created by the other company. The company filmed them, not me. They pulled them all down. Um, you can go to my YouTube page. Everything that's on my YouTube page that is there is open. It is public. And the things that are on my YouTube page that you will find there, a step number six, you will find the guidance that I give on how to grow a candidate list. The second skill, and by the way, there, it, there will be nothing that you ever learn from me or from another in the network marketing industry. There will be nothing that is more important than learning to live your life in such a way today that your candidate list grows in front of you too. There will be nothing more important. Having developed that skill, the next skill we should be developing is what? Mastering the art of the invitation. Once again, speaking specifically about what should I be doing right now, go to my YouTube page, download Mastering the Art of the Invitation and listen to it five times every single day between now and the company's launch every day so that every person you bump into, you hear that. The first key to mastering the art of the invitation is knowing what to listen for so that we're responding to another person's need as opposed to trying to provoke their interest in our need. And the third skill is the skill that I was guiding you towards here. That is the skill of learning how to present the business in a fashion that can duplicate. One can create a candidate list and have a measure of success. One can learn how to invite and have a measure of success by allowing others to present the business on your behalf. I know a sum total of no people in the entire network marketing industry who've ever really made money without learning how to present the business themselves and then learning how to transfer that knowledge and skill to other people. Therefore, there is a reason and a logic and a profound rationale because the dynamics of the moment of opportunity to, for a short period of time, be willing to make shortcuts I don't want to slow anyone down right now. Every single opportunity to hear this business, I advise you to have a candidate on it. I also advise you to know that if during the time that it is artificially easy, why is it artificially easy? Because the worst message in network marketing and the most successful message is you can be first. Why is it the worst message? Worst message because it becomes a little less true every day. Why is it the best message? Because when it is true, one can accomplish six years worth of productivity in six weeks or six months. So right now, I encourage you to create the candidate list and I encourage you to have that candidate listening to every single business presentation with the only qualifier being if you lack respect for whomever is making the presentation. Now, in our current list of people that I know who would be presenting the business, I can't think of anyone who would fall into that category, but only those people who you respect should you guide your people to listen to. Um, learn how to create a candidate list, learn how to master the art of the invitation. When I got involved in the network marketing industry 30 years ago, I was told, Randy, you need to present the business in your home every single week for the next 52 weeks. Um, I have what I call a magic magnifying mind. I don't know how many times I presented the business in the first 52 weeks um, because I hadn't yet learned at that time that that which is measured can be improved and that which I failed to measure, my mind will exaggerate. And so my mind has convinced me that I did 52 presentations, 52 weeks in a row in my home. I'm sure I didn't. I'm sure I didn't. I'll bet I didn't on Easter. I'll bet I didn't on Christmas. I'll bet I didn't when one of my kids was sick. I'll bet I didn't when whatever. But I'm pretty sure that I opened my home 45 out of the first 52 weeks and did a business presentation. And when nobody showed up, I set up a VHS camera and I presented the business anyway. And why? I did it so I could get better. Skill to do comes from the doing. And I did it because that made it far more likely that next week I would have people because I'm sacrificing my Tuesday night anyway for the next 52 weeks. I better have somebody here to talk to. And remember this, when um, there is a broad misconception among many that the, the belief that if I 
open my home or I do a business presentation, if I open my home, that doesn't make it a home business review in my context. It does not. Um, that home presentation was in fact an open business presentation if I was inviting other members. A private small group presentation or home business review is when you take ownership of your business, you open your home or you book a venue, it is your candidates and it may or may not include a member of your upline. If you do that three times a week for the next two weeks, when the company opens, you will have more skill than you have right now. Understand this, the same person, a lot of people again, don't like this part of my message, your total current life experience, income, marriage, relationships, friendships, net worth, everything is based upon what you know today. It's based upon your current knowledge level. It is based upon your current skills and it is based upon your current character. It is not the truth that the exact same person added to a different opportunity will have a 10 times different outcome. It's not the truth. The same person will have a very modestly improved outcome in a dramatically improved opportunity. If you're stepping into a dramatically improved opportunity, the way for you to get the key in that lock is for you to become a dramatically improved leader. Okay, I took way much, too much time talking. Eric, I saw you logged on a second ago. I appreciate you very much for that. Um, I'm gonna call upon my friend, Jim Moyles. And Jim, I'm just turning it over to you to describe. Now folks, when you listen to Jim, understand you're talking, you're listening to a man who has been the master distributor of various organizations. Um, he is among the very tiny handful of people whose income experiences mirror mine in the network marketing industry for the last 30 years. Um, Jim has earned millions and millions and millions of dollars, and he is among those people who has not only earned money when he happened to be involved in the hottest deal of the day. Jim has earned money and a lot of it, no matter what the project was, because of the, of the quality of strength of the leadership organizations he's created. And so, Jim, I'm going to turn it over to you and everybody. Um, do not let a single person on this session depart before they get a chance to listen to both Jim and to our chairman, Eric Allen. And Jim, I am going to ask you to unmute and turn it over to uh, my friend and one of the people that I have the greatest admiration for on the whole planet, uh, Jim Wells. Jim, go ahead. Randy, thank you. It's my pleasure to be here, and I'll do my best not to let you down. Uh, as all, all of you that have achieved success realize, uh, it doesn't come automatically or, or magically. It typically takes a lot of work. It takes the, uh, the the desire to to achieve more and to, you in this in this venue actually to help others. And um, the reason I know this personally is that. Uh, a number of years ago, having achieved success beyond my expectations in my merger and acquisition business, I kind of kicked back and bought a penthouse on, on the beach here in, uh, in Clearwater. I was enjoying life and I got bored. And a friend of mine invited me to join him in a, in a project that ended up being a new skin. And um, I was a dismal failure at that. I couldn't get my checks over $3,000 a month. And one of the challenges that Jim and I had was that he was sponsored by somebody from Atlanta. She was sponsored by somebody from Charlotte. And we had to basically reinvent the wheel. And we didn't do we didn't do very well at that. And then as fate would have it, I heard that Randy Schrader, who's uh, had my favorite audio tapes in that venue, uh, would be moving to another company. And I was able to re get, through, get through to him. And I was able to team up with him in a company called Rexall Showcase. And as all of you have heard by now, Randy became the number one distributor in that company. And for those of you that uh, know him, that shouldn't su surprise any of you. Uh, for me, it was a slow. It was a little bit more slow. I had to. Uh, I, I had to change a lot of things that I had done earlier in my other my other endeavors. And however, uh, once and I, I also had about this time the, the good fortune to stumble upon a book. It's called How to Build a Large Successful Multi Level Marketing Company. And what it taught me was that what I was, I had to modify some of the things I was doing. And what I discovered after reading that book, it's not about sponsoring the world, but it's teaming up with people and driving that organization deep so that other people on your team are making healthy checks and ultimately they can, uh, they can reach and then ultimately uh, succeed and then ultimately exceed their expectations. Uh, your business, you will discover, will end up being a reflection not only for you, but for those of you that you associate with and the company you're with. I believe we have all the ingredients here, and I've never seen as a talented leadership team as we, we have here in this company to reach all of our goals. And uh, what I'd like to share with you is um, 
a training program I, I put together. I, I'm kind of the boots on the, on, the, on the ground kind of guy that will help you avoid trail and error. And I put together a, uh, a little training program uh, for our team. And it, it kind of starts out with, a, which was formerly called, it's now called, it will be called the new member checklist. And I want to just touch on some of the highlights here and let you know some of the things that have helped me and, and my team uh, become a dominant or, uh, team in, in the various organizations which we, we, in which we've engaged. Uh, you're, you're, what, and one of the things you're going to discover is when I go through this with you. Oh, honey, I don't need that on the screen. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Jim, you've turned your video off, and I've given you the ability to share your screen if you care to, okay? Uh, your, your oh, video. Very, that was my idea. Very good. So um, once you bring somebody on board, I want to share with you um, the first thing you want to do, you have to, you, you crit, it's so critical, is that you meet with them immediately so they can avoid trial and error. Uh, and, and for the people you bring on board, it's very important that they understand as quickly as possible uh, that uh, their success is our success. This is a, this is a business that requires teamwork. And it, there's also a cycle, a cycle of duplication that I found to be paramount in building leaders, uh, as, as Randy just alluded to. Uh, so number one, uh, once you bring somebody on board, it's critical that you meet with them within 24 to 48 hours and do a, a new member orientation. Uh, and, and I put together a checklist to kind of address this. And in this checklist, um, what, one of the things you're gonna wanna advise the people that you bring on board is to control their enthusiasm until they, uh, uh, done the, the new member orientation so they can avoid trial and error. Uh, this is all about, about residual income. Let them know that if you're make, not making money while you sleep, you'll work for the rest of your life, according to Warren Buffett. And then uh, when, I'm, uh, when I, uh, I will ask them, what kind of uh, yearly residual income would make this worthwhile for you or, or, or anyone uh, or a, 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 a cause that's important to you. Uh, the, uh, the goals, and, and then I'm gonna ask them what, what, their, what their primary goals would they like to accomplish. And then I would suggest a candidate list. I, and I agree with Randy, it needs to be continually growing. But I found by simply requesting 15 to 20 people initially, it's less intimidating. And the reason that was important to have this number of people is that uh, this makes no candidate too important. It makes it, it, it takes away all the stress when you're talking to a, somebody that you, that you feel that could be very, very good at this. And um, it's, it's important in your candidate list, you wanna make sure that these are people with you'd like to have a business relationship and, a, and, and, or have a, and have a friendship or have a friendship. And uh, your, your primary, uh, qual, qual, one of the primary qualities you're looking for is a self-starter. Then I would uh, give that particular uh, person I, that has just sponsored into the business, I would give him a, a link to a couple of videos. Uh, uh, I found Eric, Eric Allen uh, has great videos. So does uh, Larry Lane. And, and, of, and of course, I'm a, I'm a student of Randy's as well. They're all stellar. And I, I, I based on who the person is, I would I, I'd make a, uh, two, a couple of recommendations for them to watch a short video between now and when we meet with them. Then there's something I, I had not heard uh, mentioned here, but one of the things I think is very important is that once you bring somebody on board, you do a welcome on board call. And the reason for that is that we all have that know-it-all brother-in-law that's gonna critique anything we do, or maybe he's your brother, as, as in my case. Uh, also, there's, there's critiques floating all around. People have different agendas on social media. So it's very important that they hear from a third party who can, who can share with them their background and, and, the, and, the, main, and the main reason that, that they're doing this. Um, and, the, you, and they would also at this time sh share a valuable tip or an insight uh, and, sh and also share their avail availability for, for future support. What all of you are going to discover if you've not already done so is that two people meeting with a candidate is four times as effective as one. He'll also remind, uh, the, if you'll coach him on him or her on this, when, they, when you do the welcome on board call, to remind the candidate not to mention this to any new candidates or contact them before they have their orientation so they can avoid trial and error. 
Then uh, the sponsor will confirm the time of the orientation and suggest that they, if they've not watched those two videos, that they do that promptly. Once you meet with a new member, uh, now it's, I think it's, it's now it's we and us. It's not you and I. As quickly as you can, psychologically, it's a team effort. So you want to talk about what we're going to do. In fact, what I'd like to do uh, during the new uh, uh, member orientation is to say, I'd like you to learn how to do this because this is what we'll be doing with the people that you bring on board. And we'll do, we'll, we'll, we'll do it together to help you get started. And um, here's something I think you all should understand as well. Uh, this is designed to be done part-time, at least until it approaches the income desires of, of the new member. The orientation process should be concluded within 45 minutes so that uh, uh, therefore questions that are not covered can be recovered, reviewed at the end of the session because you want to you want to have this uh, done, you want to have busy the busiest people you know join us because they always figure out a way to get it done don't they then i'm going to ask them what, what kind of earnings they need for this to, for this to probably worth the part-time part effort and then i after i hear that number i want them to understand though this is a better, this is a superior type of income. It's residual income. And so $500 a month may not seem like a lot as an example, which, which a, but on a part-time basis, that's $6,000 a year, which equates to $100,000 in after-tax income at 6% interest. And by the way, $5,000 a month, which is $60,000 a year, that equates to a million dollars a year at 6% interest. And, I, and I'm going to add, then I'm going to ask that 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 uh, that a new member. I'm going to if uh, I'm going to ask him or her uh, if you didn't do this, how long would it take you to earn another hundred? To I'm excuse me to save another hundred thousand dollars. I think for a lot of people that really puts this in perspective. Let alone a million dollars. And for this to be your primary focus, what would you need to earn? Take into consideration the value of residual income. And just think, just think about that. We can we'll talk about that later in the session. I would also advise that person at this time in going through this checklist to make sure you leverage your sponsorship team. I personally don't like the word upline, upline and downline. I like the word I like teamwork better. So it's my my team versus my sponsorship team. Uh, my my primary goals and activities in this venue are getting members unified. So they can they can bring those two people on board and help them get their two people on board. That 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 way you, you're all gonna discover that's the cornerstone of the operation of this of this business endeavor. And they'll do it much more effectively and efficiently if you're there to help them. Uh, also I encourage them to understand the revenue plan, how the income is earned. It's quite important. Uh, uh, number three, let them understand too that this will ultimately generate multiple forms of, of income. We are starting out with travel, but there are um, there are other items that will add to this venue that they will find equally as compelling as, or some even more so. So this will generate multiple income streams, and I want that. I want to remind them to keep, keep that in the back of their mind. The um, Here's, let's talk about who your, your target candidates should be. My personal ones are successful, dissatisfied people. I also like working with entrepreneurs. I also like sales-oriented people, social-oriented people, like my wife also are, are bring a lot to the party. But quite frankly, everyone, this is more teaching than selling. In my experience, some of my very top income earners were teachers. And I help them refine the, the selling process. Here are the qualities that I, I, I would recommend that you look for. We want to bring everybody on board. And this is a great venue to develop people, to make them better, to make them healthier, to make them stronger. And however, a couple of attributes that you're really looking for are people that are honest, they're motivated, and they're coachable. Uh, this, these, are, these cornerstones will make your life a lot easier with the people with whom you're working. And I want to remind them, I, I, maybe I'm overdoing this quote, but I want to remind them, 
Uh, Warren Bur uh, Buffett's uh, quote, if you're not making money while you sleep, you will work for the rest of your life. Do you, 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 don't, you, don't, you don't, do you, do you find yourself potentially in that position right now? Then I want, I'd like to know that the, um, then I want to give them something they can re relate to. Um, Warren Buffett again, he, he, I was reading one of his quotes the other day and he mentioned that the only thing he's aware of is outperform the, uh, S the S and P averages over the last 25 years is commercial real estate. And I, I'm very active in that marketplace. In fact, uh, the income I've earned in my other endeavors has gone into commercial real estate. So now I have another source of residual income that's taken the pressure off my life and enabled me to live in the beautiful home that I have and have the creature comfort so my, my, my lovely wife and I enjoy. So I have a little comparison here between res residual income comparing to commercial real estate and social marketing. And as I refine this, and if we had more time, I'd share it with you, with, you, with, you, with, you, with you right now. My wife advised me, I have five more minutes, so I'll try, to, I'll try to hit that number. I also want people to understand how critical timing is. You know, we obviously, this, this, will, be, as, this will be a lifelong opportunity. In my endeavor with Rexall Showcase International, I was in that business for about 26 years. And then I had a little falling out with the president of the company and I got a little bored. And so and my checks weren't quite what they once were. And so I got involved in a new venture that I uh, started with my daughter. And uh, my daughter then became the top, and that was in 2010. And by following the format I'm sharing with all of you, uh, within two or three months, my daughter became quickly the, the number one distributor in that company. And within a year, uh, over 95% of the people in that organization that were joining were under, were, were under my daughter. Uh, Randy mentioned how critically important inviting is. I could not agree with him more than that. And uh, one of my favorite questions if I'm talking to somebody who's business oriented is, are you open to another source of income if it makes sense? Uh, try to put yourself uh, in, the, in the seat of the person you, you walk, you're talking to. And, Think what would be important to them. And also think of questions that are difficult to say no to. Now, I don't know about all of you, but I think we're in risk of a recession. And one of the questions I would ask somebody that's, that's, that's involved in a business that's, that could be recession related, like everybody in real estate is, and in, 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 in most venues are today, I would ask them a question that's hard to say no to, such as, do you think we'll ever have another recession? And then, and by the way, I'm reading this. You're going to find that most of what you do, most of what you see here, you're going to either say over the phone where you can just read it, or you can read it with, with a person with whom you're training, because at this time, it's a training session for that person to then become the sponsor and, to, and be sitting in the same position that you were in at this point in time. And, uh, and, then, and then my follow-up question to that recession question is, wouldn't it be wise for all of us to have another source of income? It's hard to say no to that, isn't it? And then I would either uh, introduce a video or um, a, I, I like the little two-minute video that we had or something along those lines. Randy, do I have a couple more minutes or should I bring you to a conclusion here? Jim, I'm gonna, I want you to finish, but I've only got Eric Allen here. He has to leave in two minutes. So I'm gonna ask you to pause for just a couple of minutes so we can bring Eric on and then I'm gonna come back because I'd like you to finish. Is that okay? I love, I would love, I would, I don't want to miss Eric either. Thank you. It's a great idea. Beautiful. That's fabulous. So Eric, would you please raise your hand so I can see you there? And by the way, folks, while I'm waiting to get Eric on here, what Jim is describing to you, what Jim is describing to you is how to put meat on the bones. Um, there is in our network marketing industry, um, there's an impression among some that there's luck involved. Folks, there's no luck. If we do A, we get B, and if we do C, we get D. That's the way it is. Eric, thank you so much for being here. Um, I appreciate the opportunity. I appreciate your willingness to be here to support us. Um, we're going to make a whole bunch of money for a whole lot of people. I know your time is short. Everybody, Eric out. And Eric, you got to unmute yourself. You're muted right now. Randy Schrader, how are you? So good. Thank you. Man, uh, Jim Oils, good stuff. Sorry to interrupt your time, man. That was a like getting uh, your PhD in human behavior, psychology, uh, networking, recruiting, just life in general. Um, I am a 
huge Randy Schrader fan. I think God's given him a skill set that uh, only a few other unicorns that come to mind in the <laughs> world have. So uh, I am just honored to be on here. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things I could share um, in our time together. Um, but first and foremost, I am just incredibly grateful for the last year. I don't know if there's ever been a season of my life where so many amazing servant leaders, genuinely good human beings have kind of come together for uh, what they thought uh, may or may not have been a worthy ideal. But the fact is they came into my life and I I just count my blessings for that. So um, I, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've got over a dozen traditional companies. I've got a charity my wife and I are uh, extremely passionate about. And, uh, you know, I love network marketing. I'm not afraid to say it. You know, I love, love network marketing. I love relationship marketing when it's done the right way. Uh, it, would, it took a guy like me from being an inner city school teacher to a college basketball coach, uh, living below the poverty level, never seeing his family to just uh, creating uh, an incredible life. And I'm so grateful for the journey, the highs, the lows, the ups, the downs, per personally, professionally. And, you know, it's fascinating. In the last few weeks, it's, it's been interesting as I've, uh, you know, talked with Randy, you know, uh, I've never wanted to own a network marketing company. My traditional businesses give me enough headaches. I'm, I'm jealous of Randy. He gets to live the field leadership lifestyle, work really hard, and then take weeks off with his beautiful family and wife and Brosco and all the fun stuff they get to do and keep the chat going. But I had to have some serious reflection meditation recently. And I think the most selfish thing I could have done is just say, you know, you know, maybe this worked out, maybe it will, maybe it won't. Uh, maybe my heart's not in it as much. And I'm just going to go back to a really comfortable life here in the Midwestern United States. And it's so funny, and I don't want to impose my faith on you, but it's so funny how God works, right? Sometimes at your lowest, darkest valleys, it's when you get molded into the, the person you have to become to not only take your life, but the lives of other people to a whole nother level. And I, I am grateful for everything I've been through up to this point to prepare us, should you choose to do so. And I can't think of a better person to be in business with than Randy Schrader, Jim Moyles, and I see so many other great leaders on this call. And I'm going to call a spade a spade. I mean, there are people out there that it, probably many on the Zoom. I mean, they have to make money. They're hurting uh, they're in pain. Uh, inflation's just uh, devastating them. I don't see it getting any better personally, but uh, that's just me. And I said, you know, um, I sat down with my wife 16 days ago and I said, honey, remember that dream that's kind of been in my heart to create this tremendous value-driven lifestyle membership that uh, has a very low barrier to entry that allows anybody from any corner of the world to participate. Whether you live in America, whether you live in the Philippines, whether you live in Madagascar, Iceland, the Isle of Man, wouldn't it be great to build a global community? And for those of you who've never benefited from global um, and what we call time zone leverage, it's a, it's a really beautiful thing. Um, so not only can we help people in our own country, but around the world. And uh, for me, you know, uh, trust is a really interesting thing. You know, Randy and I, we're both kind of alpha males. We both sometimes think we know best and we uh, sometimes will just have it out. And there's always this level of mutual respect, you know, and, you, you know, you don't want to get on Randy's bad side. Uh, so sometimes I submit just out of pure uh, uh, <laughs> well-being for myself. But, you know, um, trust is really interesting. I know that over the last couple of years and, you know, especially the last year building trust with Randy and a lot of you people on here, it's interesting, right? Because I can continue to build that up over time. I can make one really lousy, bad, selfish decision and violate that trust forever and spend the rest of my life repairing that. And uh, it's something I take very seriously myself, the other uh, co-owners. I know my limitations. I know what I'm good at. I know what I'm not good at. And just surrounded myself with people that compliment me, make me a better version of myself. And certainly on the ownership side, build something that's rock solid, stable, world class from day one. And, you know, I told Randy, like, I'll tell you the, the same thing. If I'm not helping Randy Schrader and other people make more money than me as the owner, I'm not doing my job. You know, there's four owners of us um, and we live off. Uh, X amount of money that comes in and the rest that comes in goes for operation. It goes to incentives. It goes to promotions. It goes to the things that drive the field behavior that makes them feel special, loved, rewarded. 
And how cool if you could build a community and a culture where people, you know, that are able to make money quickly, um, they love the value proposition that's there, and they feel like there's something, they're a part of something bigger than themselves. And it's pretty magical. I've, I can only think of a few uh, traditional companies, a couple of uh, relationship-driven companies that have kind of had that magic for a certain time. And I feel incredibly blessed to, you know, have a startup here that's not a typical startup. It's very well financed. Ask my wife. Uh, at her, I look at her bank account lately. It's very well financed. Um, it's got world-class players. And most importantly, it brings a caliber of servant leadership from day one that most companies would go their entire existence to get one of those people, one Randy Schrader, one Jim Moore, one of any uh, number of people. And I feel like the times come in the world with technology, especially AI technology, having a constant never ending pulse on what that community wants, the value they want to see and um, the future value that can be kind of introduced to that community. Some can be commissionable volume, some cannot, but uh, the, we've come to a point in time where if we can just take the the typical things that destroy great movements, and it usually counts down to pride, ego, greed, ignorance, arrogance, selfishness. We've all seen it over and over and over, right? Wouldn't it be great if the right people could come together to start a global movement where people can make real money off something they feel good about not only quickly, but sustainably for a long, long time. And the hope is any of you that choose to participate and be a part of this, you're going to come in with that true co-creation mindset. I want you to envision your dream company, because what we're building here with Nilo Life, it's not my company. It's not Randy's company. It is our company, as much yours as it is mine or anybody else's, where you feel valued, you feel like you have a voice, and you're with people that you want to do life with. The best experiences I had was about a decade long experience where we uh, took a vacation two, three times a month with my family, world school, the kids, the kids are playing with other kids at nice resorts, properties around the country, around the world. And even people that were cross lined to me were just enjoying fellowship and creating these high peak experiences and memories. In fact, if you look at many companies, they see the most growth when they have a great incentive trip for you to qualify for. And if you're one of the, uh, few that choose to work hard and qualify, what if that was your product? What if all the membership did was allow you to take one or two extra vacations a year and create those high peak experiences and memories? You know, what if we brought in world-class thought leaders based on the feedback of the community and uh, goal setting, leadership development, financial literacy? Knowing me, I'm crazy enough to pay John Bon Jovi his $200,000 stipend to come in and live stream to the whole world for 30 minutes. I mean, something really fun that you want to be a part of and that you have a chance to win big. And we have designed this with you in mind. We've got the best legal counsel. We got the best tech unicorns. We got the best marketers, the best branders, but the things I'm listening to Randy and Jim say, I mean, that, that, and the, the fact that they give it freely, the fact that, you know, I've been on, uh, I've been to, you know, big personal development conferences for $10,000 and I, I can't get, from those speakers where I can get with 30 minutes with Randy or Jim Moyles and all that's great. But if you don't have the right vessel and the right vehicle in which to transfer and apply it, it can be the most frustrating thing. And, you know, I, to me, you know, it, it, I feel like a hip, hypocrite some ways because for 20 years, I've been telling people, Hey, you're in business for yourself, not by yourself. It's a low barrier to entry. Anybody can win big here only to have those hopes and dreams literally devastate people's lives because what happens behind the corporate curtain is not in the best interest of the very people who are building that empire with you. And we're not going to go build a new empire in the ashes of another one. We're going to be forward thinking. And, you know, there's a eight point, what, seven billion people on the planet. OK, and let's say two thirds of them are 18 or over. And wouldn't it be great to just share something that can unify, transform people and just uplift humanity? And yes, I did say make money. That's part of our mission. Say we want you to make money. You deserve to make money directly based on the work and effort you put into it. So I'm looking forward to the journey ahead for those of you who are willing to step out on a little bit of faith, um, that, that trust, that transparency, that transformation, our core values is something that is near and dear to my heart. 
it's a crown that myself, uh, the other business owners, uh, we, ver we, we wear uh, very, very proudly and with a great deal of responsibility because I've been in your shoes. I've been in, we've all been in the shoes where, you know, you get excited, passionate, and you, you just get things ripped away from you. And we're not going to be that company. I'm not going to be perfect. We're going to make mistakes. I mean, we're, you know, the goal is to put in 50,000 people our first 30 days. I think we could two or three X that based on even the international leadership that has been reaching out to us lately. So we're obviously going to have some bumps on the road. We're going to make mistakes. And it's our job to just take ownership, not make excuses, not do the blame game. Just say, you know what? That's on us. We learn from it and we're going to get better. And if you're willing to be a part of that and bring your leadership, your vision into something where you feel <laughs> like you matter here, then you know I would invite you to be a part of the Nilo movement. And uh, Randy Schrader, that was probably uh, the most challenging yet rewarding call that you and I had. Because imagine approaching a guy like Randy Schrader who could go to any company he wanted. He could start any company he wanted. He has the life that most people that get into home-based business ultimately want. And um, just to be locking arms with you, brother, and having you hold us accountable and figuring out how to keep paying you guys as much as uh, operationally possible is a, a journey I look forward to, my friend. So appreciate you having me on. The future is very bright. And Let's just go change the world together. Thank you. Eric, thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. And let me ask you guys all of you a question before I give it back over to Jim Moyles. Um, this is not just a reboot, is it? Doesn't it already feel different to you than what we've been doing? It already feels different. It's about creating deliverables. It's about making money now, doing the right thing for the right reasons, for the right purposes, and not having smoke and mirrors, but having facts and substance behind it. Uh, Jim, I'm going to turn it back over to you to uh, to uh, go on and finish your your uh, content. And Eric, again, thank you very much. I know you got to run. We appreciate you being here. Long. God bless you. Bye bye, Eric. That was outstanding as always. Thank you. Thank you. you know, Eric said something else that resonated with me. Um, in I mentioned I mentioned to you that uh, our recent endeavor that in which we are engaged, and uh, at that point in time, I was a little frustrated with the management of the new management team at the uh, at, at, at the Rexall Showcase, and um, and because of that, and I was and I was somewhat bored. I got involved with another company, and my daughter became the, dist the distributor. And uh, I mentioned to you she became the the number one distributor in that company or at least 95% went right underneath her. What was kind of neat, though, is that underneath her was my sister. And underneath my sister was, was a, a real estate broker. And the first, they had, they had this position in the company, I think it was called Enterprise. And the first one to become Enterprise in the company was not my daughter, myself, slash myself, or Barbara, my sister, but it was Lauren. And so the, you will, hit, and I, and, and uh, I, I was so satisfied with that because it showed the, the fairness of the compensation plan and the fact that we were doing a great job. So I would encourage you that you can measure your success by not only your own check, but even more so by the people in which that are on your team. All right, now I'm, I'm going to try to wrap this up within the next four minutes if I can. Um, don't spill all your candy in the lobby. Unless you, now I have to I have to modify this a little bit because now we're looking at a seventy five dollar decision, and it's very important that we don't overburden people with too much information because this is like having a nice a nice lunch or a nice dinner. So uh, keep it simple. Uh, uh, dramatize the teamwork. Let them know the caliber of the leadership team. The caliber, the uh, the products that we're bringing to the market, the fact that this is not just the first one, but this will be a potpourri, I believe, of top-notch products to make this a truly a world-class company, or I wouldn't be engaged in this right now. The next thing I want to just touch up on all of you is, is the timing. Uh, in my humble opinion, uh, as we are, as, as soon as we are able to get moving forward with this, I believe one day today is worth a week, a year from now. I believe a month could be worth a year. This is a critical period for you not only to bring people on board, but to make sure that you help unify those people, 
that you bring on board, that you help them get their first two, two key people so they don't have to do this by themselves. They must understand it's a team effort. And one of the subtleties of this is that if people do this, try to do this by themselves, then the person they're, they're talking to thinks they have to do it by themselves. Whereas if you're with them on the call, if, you're, if they see it's a team effort, and you're going to see if I have time to share with you my getting the yes sequence, how I incorporate that into a, bringing this to a positive decision. What I want to share with you right now is that my, the last thing I'm going to cover is helping people come to a positive decision. This is such a, this is so logically the smart thing to do. But what I've where I've seen people uh, undermine their ability to bring people on board is to just keep talking and talking and repeating themselves. So what I've attempted to do here, and we're in, it's in fact not an attempt. I've done this with remarkable success, not only in this endeavor, but in the other endeavors in which I've been engaged. In fact, um, as I mentioned to you, the, rate, the way uh, my little group and, my, and my, my kids' little group ended up being number three and number six in the company is because they followed our little system and they found it to be extremely effective. Okay. Um, so here's, here, um, do I have time to share my closing sequence, Randy? Okay. Um, when you're when you're going through this, uh, what I what I like to do is if, if any questions come up, I, I'll I'll address those and I'll ask them if, and I'll respond to that concisely as possible, and I'll, I'll I, I will avoid going off into a tangent, and then I'll ask them if they feel they're, they're, if, if that makes them feel more comfortable, and then I'll ask them if they have if they have another question that's important to them, and I'll try I'll do my best to cover that in the same way, and then I'm going to say the following. If let's say I'm talking to Tom, I would say, Tom, if you were to do this, what would you like to accomplish? Uh, it might be to help other people to, to, he might have a specific thing in mind. It might be to have another source of income. Maybe he's concerned about the recession. Well, our goal, Tom, is to make this happen in a big way and to be the most profitable, successful team in the company. Would you like, let's say I'm with Lori, because I'm always, I'm going to try to always have a second person with me, or I'm going to try to be there with Lori. Uh, would you, what would you like for me and Lori as your sponsors? And it's not, need, typically it's just say to help me to be there when I need, when I need help to answer my questions. And then I'm going to turn to Lori. I'm going to say, Lori, is that okay with you? And if it's reasonable, she's going to say yes. And then I'm going to say, uh, Tom, I feel the same way. And, um, uh, and I look forward to working with you. And I'm going to reach over and shake his hand. Or I'm going to just say, Tom, we, Lori and I, as you can tell, feel the same way. And uh, by the way, um, what, what, and then I'm going to say, what, what email address would you like to use? And then I'm just going to fill out an application. Keep it simple, everyone. Don't overdo this. And uh, I had a couple, few other things I'm going to be adding to this over the next few days. And at the appropriate time, I'll refine my old notes and uh, help you have a program that all of you can use to reach your goals and objectives. Thanks for having me on, Randy. Yeah, I appreciate it so much. And folks, um, I hope you know, you were just given a masterclass. And uh, people think that luck is what wins in network marketing. It is not. It literally has nothing to do with luck. There is a process. It's a process that has always worked. The process works almost irrespective of our own personal skill set. As we grow our skills and as we grow our character such that we become able to successfully interact with more people, then that message goes further. But I want you all to know, whoever you are and whatever your past life's experiences have been, you can succeed and you can make money at this if you're willing to develop those four simple skills. Remember that everything that we accomplish today in our life is the result of what we know, knowledge, skills, what we know how to do, and character, how we do it. I remind you all that the most important part is character, how we do it. If the how we do it, the way we conduct ourselves is in every way appropriate and attractive and sensitive to others, that makes the other skills less important. What I challenge you to do is this, recognizing that being able to identify an area of character weakness, confront it and resolve it, that might take a year or two. And so as we work on that, I encourage us all to work very, very aggressively on skill development, which can be done in a day or two. Okay. Everybody, 
Uh, this is a magic moment. It really is. I hope I hope that our message was effective and beneficial to you tonight. Eric is gone for the evening, so I will thank him again next time I see him. Jim, thank you very much. Thank you all for being here. Um, if you're not a, um, um, if you're not, well, I'm just going to skip that. Uh, I was going to say, if you're not yet enrolled, of course you're not. Nobody is. <laughs> so I'll pass my bat and we'll get back to it quickly. But I encourage you to stay very, very closely in tune. There will not be a 24-hour period that goes by without uh, further night light and knowledge, which we intend to uh, provide to everybody and help you all make more money more quickly. Be more happy more of the time. Everybody, God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Jim, thank you again. Talk to you all soon. Thank you, Randy. Now, it's all about the bubbles. See you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>